a destination or simply destiny. Antigua and Barbuda, we welcome you. Finger block. 17 overs gone, 92 for 7, 20.33 per over required from here. So uh, it's not going to happen, that's for sure. I've, uh, I've got Steve Parchers alongside me, who's the physiotherapist for uh, Stanford 2020. And I just want to pick up on the conversation the boys are having upstairs about the cramp. Mm -hmm. The guys were saying that uh, in cricket, actually worldwide these days, cramp is a, is a bit of an issue. We see quite a few guys going down. Almost some exercise for the umpire, but not. Oh, that's uh, a good return, a good throw at the stumps. It has gone to the third umpire. So let's go back to our commentators, and Steve will chat again shortly. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Well, this looked <laughs> very tight. Now, let's see whether he's got back. I'm just guessing it looked very tight. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, it was very, very tight. He just could not get back. Very good wicket keeping. It's Patrick Brown, the keeper. It's a wide, but he's still gone. A run is added to the total, but a wicket goes into the column as well. Barbados have been very good in the field tonight. All round. Patrick Brown, this should be out. Yeah, the hawk is gone, he's shaking his head, he's scratching, and it signals the end, 93 now for eight. Three for eight it is. Neil and Pascal was the last man we think, and I've got Steve Parchers alongside me. Steve, just tell us about Heron Campbell. He's not coming back at all. No, I'd be very surprised if we see him this evening. He's already headed to the hospital, get some uh, imaging done. I suspect he's probably he's definitely got a dislocation there, but I suspect he's also got a fracture through the joint. So we'll just see how that pans out this evening. Yeah, it's not great news for him. Okay, we're about to see the first delivery of the 18th over. Down the leg side, exercise for the umpire. Let's get back to that cramp okay. story. So why has that improved throughout this tournament? The commentators are speculating. Oh, I think you'll find that the, as the teams progress with the tournament, the fitter teams are, are surviving, so to speak, and they're the ones that are less prone to cramp. Okay. And how can you actually avoid cramp? What's the, what are the, the golden rules to avoid cramp? Okay, we talk about the known factors for cramp. One is obviously base fitness, two, hydration, um, three, good physical preparation, pre-stretch. Uh, when you're talking about hydration, you're looking at 24, 36 hours pre-event. You want to take, take in as much fluid as you can prior to the event. You actually don't absorb fluid very well um, orally once you start competing. Um, so you need to do so beforehand. The unknowns, obviously, are how, how your body reacts in a stressful situation. And you'll see guys that probably aren't used to playing this level of cricket are more prone to that sort of, you know, that sort of cramping. And in your knowledge, has, uh, has Pat Simcox ever suffered from cramp? I don't know that Pat's ever had the base fitness. He's worked on his hydration, I know, a lot this tour. Yes, yes, so, yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Right, let's go back upstairs. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. So says Jerry Springer. Or should we call him Jerry Lewis? Interesting. Base fitness. Mm. Well, we're seeing two of the four established teams going through to the semi-final as, as right Trinidad and Tobago and now Barbados will go through 56 required or 15 22 and over required with only one wicket left it's a big game to come another very very strong team tomorrow Jamaica with Gail back with Marlon Samuels back Jamaica really are strong once you get to that semi-final stage, it's anybody's game. You cannot count, discount anyone. Could be Barbados, could be any one of those big four, but Guyana still have to get past Nevis, Jamaica. Sorry, Guyana still have to get past Antigua. Antigua could cause an upset. You can't take them lightly. You're a pro team. So lots of cricket here. If he picked it up, you would have been gone.
98 for eight. A fairy tale. A game for the ages. A success story. A destination. Or simply destiny. Antigua and Barbuda, we welcome you. Hi, and this could be the end of the match. Here in Campbell won't bat. The catch is taken by Alcinda Holder, and that is the end. Barbados have won. Quite convincingly too, outstanding in the field, outstanding with the ball, and they got some good impetus from their batting. Young Jonathan Carter has been outstanding tonight with the bat, and Barbados are through to the semi-final. They win by 54 runs. Well, this is how it ended. It was a real poor delivery, full toss. You're bowling to the back enders. They often miss hit those. Straight up she went, and look how comfortable it was taken. Good technique, catching nice and high, and that's the mark of a good control fielder. Camelus Alexander goes for 20, phase 20 deliveries, played well. And 98. So, Barbados won comfortably, and they put their arms around each other, and uh, you can see Ben sticking out a mile away. Booty bowled nicely again, waiting for the boys to gather around. Just a little huddle to say well done, and we've uh, achieved a goal. Lovely shot. Making sure it's all part of staying humble. Just a little bread. Nothing wrong with that. That's the batting card. They didn't get off to a good start, and 4 0 3 didn't help the cause. And again, there was the run out of oh, my Fletcher, and then uh, a little boost of 18, but nothing really. That threatened. No one got in, stayed in, batted through. The bowling card, well, Tino Best worked up a bit of pace. I thought Ben bowled fantastic. Look at the, the bowling figure there 4 4 2. And, uh, all everybody bowled pretty well when you bowl the side out for 98. Just seven extras, which is very professional. 18.1 overs it all happened in. They managed to bowl a couple of bowlers to give everybody a bit of a run. And so really the summary of the match, 152 for four, they got in 20 overs. Well played by Carter, really impressive. Irons 45 not out and holder and it fell away badly for Grenada. They end their Stanford 2020 2008 challenge. They lose by 54 runs and uh, of course, there's always the importance of cheering for your fans and making sure that they come back and you just enjoy the moment. It's always important to enjoy winning because uh, it's never nice to lose. Barbados have a second team through to the semi-final of Stanford 2020-2008. They were the favorites coming in tonight's match and they did not disappoint. This is what happened. The Barbados got to 152 for four. Anything over 150, anything over 130. If you back first seems at the moment to be a good score in this tournament. And Grenada, well, against that Barbados bowling attack, uh, really lost initiative uh, almost from the start. 98 all out. Aaron Campbell wasn't able to bat. Derek Bishop, three for 19. Ben was outstanding, two for four. And then the other bowlers chipped in. Pat Simcox is alongside me at the moment. Pat, it was important for me uh, that Barbados got runs tonight because their bowling just took care of itself. Their bowling looks looks omnipotent, looks very powerful. And I think the point you make that they, they got runs. I think the real test, which is going to come for Barbados, if somebody says, OK, you chase, because they're relying on a young guy in the middle there. He's 20 years old. He's a wonderful talent. He got 60. But you know when you're chasing, you chase with those extra pressures on you. It's, it's quite tough. And, and, and there, there might be a time when they need to chase. And 
then we'll really see whether their depth of batting is good enough. Their bowling is certainly good enough. Yeah, they've got some experience and that skill there as well. I thought they were good in the field too. We could talk about the bowling, we could talk about the batting click, but their ground feeling and their all-round feeling and catching tonight, when you contrast uh, Grenada dropping four catches, Barbados were, were very good. Yeah, they looked a, they looked a well drilled unit. You can see they worked hard, they, you know, their throwing was good. They, they hit the wicket off and they knew when to throw. They, you, you watch the off-field play and you watch them backing up. You know, when there was a throw coming in, fielders backing it up. Very professionally run outfit. So um, that, that would stand them in good stead. And they've had, a, they've had two games which have been hard. That'll battle hard in them. Yeah, from Grenada's point of view, they, they battled. We were very impressed with them early on, weren't we? And then just pressure. There comes a crunch time where I suppose the bigger teams just tend to rise to it. Last 10 overs of the innings again tonight. Barbados just seem to assert themselves a bit more. Yeah, I, I was disappointed that uh, somebody never took on the role of batting through for a little while. Because I, if you're going to chase 150, 160, you've got to have somebody gets a 70 and preferably one in the top three. And they never showed that intent to bat through. And that's mm. where they lost in wickets all along and then just fell away. Yeah, difficult for them, Pat. Let's leave it there for the moment. Let's go down to the presentation where Mike Hazeman is waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the presentation. Before we go any further, I just want to introduce the people of the presentation party. Alongside me is Kurt Lee Ambrose, and Kurt will be announcing the man of the match. His adjudicators uh, tonight were himself, Lance Gibbs, and also Courtney Walsh. And as per normal, Sir Alan Stanford is also here to be handing out the checks as well. My first duty is to chat to the losing skipper, Raul Lewis. If you can just please come over, chat, Raul. Roll bad luck. It was uh, you guys started superbly, and then they just got a few runs in the middle, which just uh, made it a bit tough for you. Yeah, I thought we had a good start, but um, they had this wonderful partnership. And in 2020 cricket, you need partnerships, and you know they took it from there and played a really good game. And that's the essence of the game, isn't it? Just two guys. Sometimes just one guy can change the face of the whole match. It is because when we started to bat, you know, straight away we get started falling, and it's always hard to come from behind and play. If you get a good start, you could always build on it, and we didn't get that. Okay. And a quick little trip for you back with the boys how was the atmosphere within in the change rooms well it is it's kind of done you know because um we thought we could have get 150 odd but you know it didn't happen for us hopefully we'll go back home and walk hard and come next time okay thank you and bad luck okay thanks okay. Raul lewis of course the captain of grenada now i'd like to chat to the winning skipper dwayne smith dwayne <laughs> dwayne well played i guess you guys had a bit of a point to prove tonight well, yeah, um, the guys know that they didn't put in as, as a good a performance as um, last game, but the guys really know, told me that they're going to come out and put in a better performance. As I told you from the start, that the guys are really going to put in a better batting performance because we were working very hard in our practice sessions. And the guys really backed them up in the bowling and the fielding, so I'm very happy with my team. And I guess from your point of view as captain and Vasper Drakes as coach, one of the nice things about today, you're in trouble, but you got out of it and played superbly. Yeah, um, I didn't really bother. Um, as long as we kept the kits in the hand, I, I know we could have pushed on at the end. We had a lot of hitters at the bottom. Fortunately, I didn't get to, to give them a chance to do that, but all the guys did well, and I'm happy with my performance and the teams. And you're in the semi. Yeah, um, Trinidad is going to be a tough game. Um, we all know it's like a grudge match for us, so yeah. we're going to be up for it. You've got to get back into the nets now and get some proper stuff doing and work on it and um, improving our performances. Okay, well played. Thank you. Okay, Dwayne Smith, captain of Barbados. Right, now it's time to uh, announce the play of the match. I'd like to draw your attention to the big screens here at the Stanford Cricket Ground. The play of the match is a run out. We've had a few of those so far. It's the run out of Dale Richards and Rondal Baptiste is the man who picks up 10,000 US dollars from Sir Alan Stanford. There we go, $10,000 uh, check for Rondell. If you can just come and have a quick word with me. The runouts have been quite remarkable so far in this tournament. Yeah, it's good to see for the game that the feeling is so important aspect of the game and it's good to see our field in our up, upper knots in the Caribbean. Okay, well, well done tonight and uh, congratulations on winning $10,000. US A nice feeling? Thank you very much, okay. yes. Terrific, thank you, Rondell. I'm now going to ask uh, Curtly Ambrose to announce the man of the match. Thank you, Mike. Uh, along with myself, Courtney Walsh and Lance Gibbs, our task tonight was a pretty simple one. And since I'm not a politician, I'm not going to give you a world speech. I'll get straight to it. The man of the match is Jonathan Carter. Jonathan Carter scored 61 of 49 deliveries. Jonathan, 25,000 US dollars from Sir Alan Stanford. 
Jonathan, I'm just going to, we know you're, you're a youngster and you showed some great talent today, but when there's 25,000 US dollars on go, you don't walk past the check. Well, um, I'm, I'm a bit nervous at this <laughs> moment. Um, I know I, I'm at a loss of words. As well, you must be very happy the way you played, for starters. Well, definitely. Um, I'm a nervous starter, and I just told Ryan that I wanted to get it on, and, and he told me about do my thing. So I just did my thing, and we rotated the strike, and we did it in the grace of God. And Jonathan, one of the important things about Stanford 2020 is it gives young players a chance to show themselves, show their talents on the big stage. Yeah, it was a big opportunity for me. I, 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 was, I wanted to play this since 2006. Um, it, was, it has been a big dream for me to be on this big stage, and I really thank God for this. Okay. 25,000 US dollars, what do you think about that? <laughs> um, the guy, I have to ask the guys what they think about that, because so, I'm splitting it with them. That's very generous. Well done. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Jonathan Carter, the, uh, the man of the match, 25,000 US dollars. Alan Kirtley, thank you very much. That concludes the presentation. Very happy Barbados team, and so they should be as well. It was difficult for them in the first match against Dominica, but like uh, experienced players and uh, top class teams, they've worked at their game and they've come back well. Well, it was a fantastic outing for Barbados. Grenada, sadly, they're out of this tournament, but still more cricket to come here in the Sanford 2020 2008. Huge match here at the Sanford Cricket Ground tomorrow. It's quarterfinal number three, and the boys from Jamaica, Chris Gale, Marlon Samuels, Jerome Taylor and company against Nevis. Nevis are a pro team. Don't take them lightly. You do that at your peril. That game is tomorrow, right here at the Sanford Cricket Ground. The boys from the land of the flying fish, they're flying high. Barbados, through to the semi-final. Come rise with us next time, and we hope that you've enjoyed tonight's cricket. Goodbye. 20, 20, are you ready? Spread it. 20, 20.